Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I load all of these videos. Today we're talking about specific power output more specifically, excuse the pun, 100 horsepower per liter. Well, what does that mean? That means our 4.8 liter LS would have to make 480 horsepower or our 5.3 liter fingers crossed, would need to make a whopping 530 horsepower, or if you're lucky enough to have a six liter, that is an even 600 horsepower. But here's the question, is it even possible? In our first example of trying to make 100 horsepower per liter, which is kind of the new benchmark back in the day, it was one horsepower per cubic inch. We had 283 horsepower, 283s. And then the factory also had combinations that made more than one horsepower per cubic inch. The 365 horse and 375 horse 327s, the 375 horse 350, and also the DZ302 in 69 and 67, 68. It was only rated at 290 horsepower at 302 cubic inches, but made closer to 350 horsepower when we actually tested it. So all of those made more than one horsepower per cubic inch, but that was back in the day. Modern cars, the new number we're looking for for performance applications would be 100 horsepower per liter. All of the LS and the LT versions are all measured in metric displacements, 4.8 liter, 5.3 liter, and 6 liter. It makes the math very easy. If we have a 6 liter and we're trying to make... 100 horsepower per liter, that's 600 horsepower, very easy math. So let's start out with a 4.8 liter that I ran. And basically this was a stock combination to begin with. And then we added heads, cam and intake manifold, obviously along with long tube headers to try to push the power up as high as we could. And here is what happens. We started off with our stock LR4 junkyard motor. Again, everything stock from the wrecking yard. We ran it with long tube headers, a Holly HP management system. We had bigger injectors in it to feed the intended power output because that would become necessary. But run with the stock truck intake manifold and long tube headers and no accessories. Our factory LR4 4.8 liter produced 333 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds of torque. So it made over one horsepower per cubic inch by a pretty good bit in this case, but we were just getting started. So what we did, here is the power output of the new combination. And what we did, you can see we've pushed the power output up dramatically. In this case, our 4.8 liter just missed making 480 horsepower, which would have been 100 horsepower per liter. It made 476 horsepower. And for the math geeks out there, that is 99.1 horsepower per liter. So just missing the 100 horsepower per liter mark. Or for the guys that want it based in horsepower per cubic inch, that's 1.625 horsepower per cubic inch. So pretty good. So in addition to making 476 horsepower, it also made 392 foot-pounds of torque. You can see that it basically equaled the power output of the stock combination down low and really didn't get going until after 4,500 RPM. We made peak power out here at 7,100 RPM. And here is the combination. We'll take a look at our test results. What we did was take the stock short block and we added upgrades to the heads, cam, and intake. We installed a set of uh, CNC ported 706 heads, so the stock heads that would have come on that 4.8 liter. They were CNC ported stage two by total engine airflow. We also added a Crane 224 cam. That combination was 590 lift, a 224, 232 degree duration, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We also topped that combination off with a fast LSXRT intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. Now, it's important to note that we only used a 224 degree duration camshaft in this. There was much more available piston to valve clearance. In fact, we could have pushed this quite a bit higher in power by putting a wilder camshaft in it because we know stuff near 231 or two or three degrees on the intake duration will fit the stock uh, available piston to valve clearance. So it could have been fairly easy to push this thing even further. We just didn't try it when I was doing this testing, but it's certainly possible to make 100 horsepower per liter with a 4.8 liter just by topping it with the right heads, cam, and intake. Test motor number two in our quest for 100 horsepower per liter was a 5.3 liter. I'm actually gonna show you 
two different combinations that we did on the 5.3 liter for specific applications. But like the 4.8 liter, our 5.3 started out as a wrecking yard motor. So meaning we used the stock bottom end, the stock block, crank rods, pistons. And then we did a top end upgrade heads, cam and intake to enhance the power production in both cases. So we'll take a look on our stock 5.3 liter was an LM7, which is the low performance version of these rated at anywhere between 285 to 300 horsepower but run on our dyno the way that we do with no accessories and optimized tune, cold, yada, 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 with long tube headers. This combination produced 355 horsepower and 381 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened on our first upgrade. And this was actually for the Big Bang Nitrous combination that I did. And you can see it produced a lot of power, 503 horsepower, I believe, 502 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 408 foot-pounds of torque. And this combination was choose for something very specific. What I was trying to do was reduce torque production, but still make a big top end number. And that's exactly what we did. And the reason for that is because we were going to be adding nitrous to it. And I didn't want a big torque spike and a big cylinder pressure spike. They would eventually blow it up. Little did I know that all of that was for naught because I ended up blowing it up by keeping my finger on that button and yeah, wah, adding all the nitrous during a lead mixer and it backfired and blew up in spectacular fashion. If you haven't seen that video, it's up, go check it out. But I'll go ahead and talk about what it took to make that kind of naturally aspirated power output. We had the stock bottom end, we had ring gap in it. We had trick flow as cast 220 heads, which are very good heads. We had a Holley high ram with dual 4150 throttle body. So in place of carburetors, we put throttle body and we ran this fuel injected. We ran a fairly good sized camshaft in it from Brian Tui Racing. It was their stage four LS3 cam, which also doubles as a very good nitrous cam because as we saw, it makes very good peak power. That was a 618, 596 lift, a 233, 250 degree duration split at 113 plus three. And as I said, worked very well with the nitrous oxide. And we produced over 500 horsepower, although not quite making our number of 100 horsepower per liter, which would have put us at 530 horsepower. In fact, that puts us right at 94.9 horsepower uh, per liter or 1.5 for seven horsepower per cubic inch. But here's another combination that also made over 500 horsepower. This was actually the Big Bang 5.3 liter that I did that ended up making over 1300 horsepower. This was run with a slightly different combination and you can see quite a bit different power curve. We weren't as concerned with torque production, although in retrospect, I probably should have been on the uh, Big Bang turbo motor because we, we ended up running twin turbos on it. But we on that combination, instead of the Trick Flow ASCAS 220s, we ran the Trick Flow CNC ported 215 Gen X heads. We had a slightly different camshaft. It was the Comp 459 camshaft, which was a 617, 624 lift. 231, 239 degree duration and 113 degree load separation angle. But the thing that really uh, produced this kind of, or helped it produce this kind of power curve was the fact that we ran a fast LSXRT intake manifold and not the Holley High Ram. So we get the big uh, dual torque peaks and that combination made also made 502 or 503 horsepower, but pushed peak torque all the way up to 443 foot pounds of torque. Now let's check out a six liter. So in our quest for 100 horsepower per liter, this is our final example. This one was a larger 6 liter. And what makes this 6 liter different than the previous 4.8 and 5.3 is this was actually a dedicated buildup. This was the motor that I used to test all of the available cathedral port intake manifolds. So if you haven't taken a look at that, check out the big cathedral port video, the big cathedral port intake test video, and check it out if you want to know how any of the factory or any of the aftermarket intake manifolds, how they perform, what they do, what kind of power curve they they provide, please look at that intake manifold because it'll give you all the answers that you want. But what makes it unique is that it was a dedicated buildup. So rather than use the factory junkyard short block, we built a dedicated short block and in fact, a long block on this combination. So we used forged rods and forged pistons. These were from, these were flat top pistons with valve relief. So that's very important from Carrillo. They, they were uh, Carrillo and CP. They were the bullet series stuff. We topped it off with very good cylinder heads. In this case, a set of airflow research CNC ported heads, uh, very good stuff from the guys at airflow research. And I'm going to show you a couple of different intake manifolds. All of them made about the same 
peak power, but big changes in the average power production. And remember the fact that this has a set of aftermarket pistons in it with valve release, which would allow us to run much more camshaft. So this is an example of a stock six liter. This was a, a, an LQ4 that I ran, made about 405 horsepower and 437 foot pounds of torque. Again, run like the other ones, truck manifold, stock 317 head, stock pistons and crank and rod, stock camshaft, long tube headers, just optimized basically. And here's what our combination looked like run first with, this was with actually a Holly High Ram intake manifold and 105 millimeter throttle body with the lid on it because the Holly has different lids that you can install, dual quad lids and various things. This one was run with the single throttle opening that most people are familiar with. And with that combination, our modified, and I'll go ahead and give you the cam specs that we ran on this combination because I haven't told you about that. And the camshaft obviously is very important. The, we had the AFR LSX V2 230 heads on it with 58 cc chamber, so we had good compression. And the camshaft was a Comp 469, which is a 617, 624 lift, a 231, 247 degree duration split, and a 113 degree lobe separation angle. We also had a, a truck pan and pickup on there. Um, big injectors, as I said, all the CP stuff. But here's what it produced with the Holly High Ram. 597 horsepower and 473 foot-pounds. And as you can see, uh, we lost a little bit of power at down low below 3500 rpm it got very very close to making 600 horsepower and the torque was pretty reasonable but what i wanted to show you uh that that by the way puts us at 99.5 uh, horsepower per liter or 1.64 horsepower per cubic inch so a pretty good amount um, but i also wanted to show you here's what happened when we replaced the holly high ram with a fast lsxrt or a fast LSXR, it made slightly less horsepower, uh, 591 horsepower, but you can see a lot more average power from 67 or 6800 all the way down. So it's a much better combination. And for those guys that think that a fast LSXRT, you know, the truck manifold, that think that that's actually a truck manifold, <laughs> it's not. It's actually the same as the fast LSXR. You can see it just basically overlays the other one. In fact, it made one or two horsepower more on the top. You know, 591, two, three horsepower, kind of splitting hairs up there. But those two intake manifolds I just want to show, show you are the same. And a long runner manifold in this RPM range is probably also a better choice than the short runner high ram stuff. Although the high ram did make the most peak power. So if peak power is the thing you're looking for, a short runner manifold is the way to go. If not, if you're looking for more average power than a long runner fast, but we did manage to just miss making 100 horsepower per liter. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure? Well, here really is the takeaway, and this is the reason that I did this video, is I get asked all the time, hey, I got a six liter. Can I make 600 horsepower? Can I just throw, you know, heads and cam on it and... <laughs> or just a can and make 600 horsepower. No, you can't. It, it takes a lot. As you saw on our six liter, it took a dedicated buildup. And one of the important things, and the thing that I wanted to point out more so than the 4.8 and the 5.3, is because on the six liter, you're taxing the cylinder head flow more so than you are on the others. The other thing that you have to do, that we had a piston that actually had valve relief. So what I should have done was put much more camshaft in it. And then we could have easily pushed this thing beyond 600 horsepower. I wasn't really trying to get 600 horsepower or even make 100 horsepower per liter. It just kind of turned out that way. I really built the motor so that we could, with the airflow research heads and the CP pistons and all that stuff, just so that we could properly test all the intake manifolds. I wanted to have enough motor to actually tax the airflow and the power production of the intake manifolds when I did the big intake manifold test. So it was a good combination, but certainly we could make a lot more power with even more camshaft. We had enough compression, we had enough head flow, and we could have put put some of the short runner intake manifolds and push power up even further to make 100 horsepower per liter possible. On the other combinations, what was kind of limiting us was, just as I said, the available piston to valve clearance problem. If we put good heads and a good intake um, and a good camshaft on like the 5.3, 
we're still kind of limited in what we can do in terms of camshaft. We have enough cylinder head. We have enough cylinder head to support over 600 horsepower on that combination. What would have been nice on the 5.3 actually is if we would have milled the heads and then which would have hurt piston valve clearance a little bit, but we still had enough with the, with the camshaft that we had. Also, if we would have put flat top pistons in, if I would have swapped in a set of even stock 4.8 pistons in the 5.3 to raise the static compression up, we could have pushed power up farther in the 5.3. On the 4.8, we could have easily made over uh, 100 horsepower per liter because the thing that's nice about the small combination is that relatively speaking, everything is already bigger. So the camshaft is relatively bigger on the smaller combination. The head flow is more than enough to support 600 horsepower. So when we're trying to make less than 500, it just makes life much easier. We used a 224 cam on the 4.8. If we would have put a 231-ish kind of cam, maybe even milled the head, got more compression, did all that stuff, we could have easily, we probably could have pushed the 4.8 up near 500 or maybe even over 500 horsepower. So it is possible to do that. The smaller combinations, it's much easier. On a bigger combination, you're right, basically going to need everything. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And yes, now they all need boost.